Hi, everyone. My name is Shang Yuan Tang from the University of Chicago. I'm going to present a work on behalf of the co-authors that we did at National Taiwan University. TilePop is a pneumatic haptic interface for VR deployed as four tiles. It can provide physicality for body scale virtual objects. Here, it approximates the physical shape of this dinosaur and allows the user to ride it. <laughs> Let me tell you a little bit about why we built this. There is clear need for haptic feedback in VR. Most research prototypes focus on providing haptic feedback on the user's hand by means of wearables and by means of tabletop devices such as shape displays. However, it is much harder to provide physicality for users to touch and interact beyond the hand, for instance, at body scale. Researchers have proposed different approaches, such as static insulation or move the props dynamically using human actuators. Actuative floors were also developed, but they aim to assist locomotion and only provided small bumps on ground surface. In this paper, we focus on providing body scale props for the users to interact with their whole body. We were inspired by the series of works utilizing the shape-changing capabilities of pneumatic actuation to create tile pop. Let me explain how it works. Tile pop consists of stacked airbags with specially designed folding structures. They are actuated with external air compressor, allowing them to pop up as shape props on demand with considerable strength. We built 27 airbags and arranged them in a 3x3 array. To enlarge the area where the user can interact in VR, we added dummy tiles made of acrylic sheets to level up the surrounding area. The whole platform is about 2 by 2 meters and 9 centimeters in height. These pop-up tiles are connected to an external air compressor as to inflate them. Because the volume to be inflated is large, we use an air compressor with 22-liter tank to speed up the interaction. As a result, we can fully inflate the cube in five seconds. To fold back the cube to a flat plane, we take out the air inside it and let the outer air pressure help it fold. To do so, we add a pump with vacuum inside a 46-liter tank to accelerate the deflation speed by allowing the air to escape to the vacuum. Deflation is generally slower by physics, and we achieve 20 seconds per cube. To control which cube airbag to inflate or deflate, we use an array of valves. They serve as an air channel multiplexer. Additional two valves are used to switch between the air compressor and the vacuum pump. Each ball valve is held in a custom 3D printed case, actuated by a servo motor and connected to the microcontroller. In this way, we can control which airbag to inflate or deflate. Next, let's talk about the units in Telpop that makes it work. The cube airbag. For each cube, the core is an off-the-shelf inflatable cube with an edge of 30 centimeters ensuring it's airtight. However, it is elastic and will dramatically bulge out when applying force. Therefore, we wrap a heat-sealed PVC fabric to constrain it. In the result, each cube can withstand 120 kilograms on top of it. Since the weight is supported by the inner compressed air, thus it is only stable when fully inflated. We add acrylic tubes to guide the folding pattern and add magnets to help alignment. To make the top surface flat and easy for walking when on the floor and for sitting when inflated, we add acrylic sheets and stacks to improve stability. We use the outlet that comes with an inflatable airbag connected with a PE tube. We opt for a force sensor instead of an air pressure sensor to sense whether the cube is fully inflated or deflated because the airflow is fast, making the air pressure inside the tube unstable. 
There are many challenges that we encountered while building Taupop. The first is folding. Initially, we implemented a folding structure for our cube, inspired by a method commonly seen in box packaging. We found that although the inflating process went well, the cube sometimes folded outward when deflating. This is undesirable because its inconsistent outcome makes arranging them into arrays difficult. Thus, we developed another folding method inspired by prior works, where the cube folds in a spiral manner. This spiral folding exhibits consistent outcome for both inflating and deflating. We finally opt for this structure. Here, you see a cube popping up by the air compressor. and folded using our vacuum pump. One consequence of this spiral structure is that it requires more space around each cube to allow its rotation. We calculated a minimal six centimeters is needed between each tile. Foam is filled in a gap. Despite the fact that there are spacing between each tile, after the airbag is inflated, the cube will slightly bulge out, filling up the gap between cubes. The second challenge is stacking. We stack several airbags to achieve different levels of heights. We show how we implemented stacking. This is a side view of a stack consists of three airbags. We initially inflated the stacks from the top one. The blue one indicates the inflating airbag. It works fine with one airbag. However, in the case of two airbags already inflated, if we inflate the last one, it causes an unstable bottom. The, long, the upper airbags form the long lever arm and will easily topple over. The other way is to inflate from the bottom one. One cube works if the folded cubes on the top are not tall. In the case of a taller stack, if we want to inflate the last one, the lower airbags are already inflated and stabilized. Therefore, the stack of three will not fall. Here, you see how we inflated from the bottom one all the way to the top. Note that deflation follows the reverse rule. Regarding tubing for stacked airbags, the spiral structure offers a natural way to rouse the tube. We fix the tubes on the vertical edges. They only turn 90 degrees at most during folding. As a result, we don't need to worry if the tubes get bent and stuck. The third challenge has to do with the time it takes for Taupop to inflate and deflate. We describe a few approaches addressing this problem. For airbags that are inflating or deflating, it is not safe to touch or sit on, so it is important to show the state of Taupop using visual indication. We implemented a warning indication if the player is too close to the transforming airbags. After the airbags are fully inflated, we show the blue outlines to invite the user to interact. Also, for virtual objects that do not perfectly match our shape, showing the blue outlines are helpful to users. Second, adding visual effects such as glowing or in smoke can be leveraged during prop transformation while the user is waiting. Third, we can design tasks of pure virtual interactions for the user when the prop is transforming. In this case, the player is undergoing an identification process while Taupop is being inflated. Fourth, if we can predict the place the prop will be, then we can inflate in advance or deflate afterward. Note that the location of the user should be considered and avoided. Lastly, if the VR experience contains a series of props, we can reuse shared parts. For this example, a dinosaur prop will be followed by a boat prop. We can look at the cubes that are designed to be inflated, then compute the shared parts of the two. Finally, we can design them to share the cubes so as to save transformation time. I've shown you how Telpop works, so let me show you the whole body skill haptics that it enables. First, on-demand shapes for the whole body. 
Tail pop can construct different shapes for whole body interactions in VR, such as a box for stepping, a chair for sitting, a desk for leaning, <laughs> and a raft for lying down. Second, tail pop can also be interacted with additional props, such as a drum. That drum set that grows while the, playing, the player is drumming using a drumstick. Or dynamic target for soccer that will bounce back the ball. Third, beyond shapes, tail pop can render some material properties, such as emulation of different stiffness by letting less air flow into the cube, and emulation of breathing or pulsing effect by controlling the inflation and deflation, deflation rhythmically. We demonstrate two complete VR experiences. The first one is Jurassic Island Scape. Snippets have been shown throughout this talk. The following is the complete experience. The player is trying to escape the island that will soon be destroyed by an erupting volcano. A dinosaur comes to help. Tail pop pops up in advance to a shape approximating the dinosaur. The player rides the dinosaur to the pier, then walks to a foot sign for identification in order to trigger a hidden boat. The boat then rises up in a smoke visual effect. In the meantime, tail pop pops up to a boat shape. After the blue indicator is shown, the player can step inside the boat and sit down. In the end, the boat takes the player out of the island. The second experience is a block world builder inspired by Minecraft. The user can build blocks in this world, where each block will be physically displayed by Talpop. The user can create a block by touching the tile sensed by the Vive Tracker. The user can change the visual appearance of the block by selecting on the menu mounted on the avatar's arm. Visual animation is shown while the block is inflating. The user destroys the block by striking it with a pickaxe. or they can destroy the whole world by using a bomb. To see how users feel when interacting with Telpop, we conduct a preliminary user evaluation to collect participants' comments. We invited nine participants from our institute to experience the two demo applications you just saw. These participants found our experiences fun and realistic. Even though Telpop did not always match the virtual object shape, Block World Builder was particularly exciting for most participants, with many of them saying it feels magical. There are several limitations for our current prototype. First of all, the time it takes for inflation and deflation is slow. This is mainly due to the air compressor we used is relatively small compared to the large volume we need. Also, the diameter of tube that fed into the cube airbag are small, limiting the airflow. Second, due to the fact that the weight is supported by air in the cube airbag, the airbag is compressible, making this inflated cube unstable for standing on top. Third, the shapes are currently large and rough. Only 2.5D block shapes are supported, with no rounded shape and overhanging structures. For future work, we are interested in two directions. As to increase the interaction speed, rather than inflating the whole volume of cube, we consider developing internal tube structures. As to provide finer shapes, we are considering designing external airbags that extend from tile pop. Let me show you some early prototypes in a small scale. 
We are exploring different pop-up structures on top of the cubes to form complex shapes, such as a rooftop shape or an arc shape. Textures could also be possible with small airbags in a specific arrangements. With this, I want to conclude this talk. We introduced TilePop, a floor-mounted shape display for VR. TilePop provides large physical shapes on demand, allowing users to walk and sit on. The idea of pop-up prop for VR can exhibit across scales. Last week, we presented Poopop, a wearable that can change into different shapes as a handheld prop for VR. And this week, we introduced shape-changing floor tiles that serves as body scale prop. We hope that these pop-up props will inspire research toward a future where the richness of visual sensation can be physically matched by rich haptic experiences. Thank you, and I'm open to questions. Okay, great, some questions. Uh, I really like the talk and as well the use of small changes for things like breathing and maybe also the dinosaur bumping up and down. I, I, think I don't think I saw that. Um, a question about the way in which it expands and contracts and rotating. Have you done anything to try to take advantage of the potential for torque feedback when you're touching, for example, an inflating one? At the very end, it's twisting a little bit, you know, clockwise or counterclockwise. Yeah, that's a... Uh that's a good point. We have tried to think to utilize the rotation, but mm -hmm. uh, currently the rotation is quite limited because mm -hmm. they're all, all uh, they're just rotating only 90 degrees, mm -hmm. and they are like dependent on the heights. Mm -hmm. So uh, it could we could utilize those to actually some like lightweight props, but. Mm -hmm they have to be uh, designed with uh, very carefully. Like a big dial or maybe a steering wheel, but not like turning it a lot, but turning it just a little bit to guide something. Yes, but they are also like dependent on the height. So yes, it's a bit tricky. We'll do one more question to stay on time here. Uh, Hi, great talk. Um, Ryo Suzuki from University of Colorado. Um, so the, the structure is pretty clever. Um, I also tried to kind of similar thing, right? Uh, it could be more robust. So one question I have is, uh, I'm just wondering if the block it can be also modular and de detachable, so that it's not a stack with a kind of floor, but uh, the user could also kind of, you know, the, the take it from from the bottom and, uh, you know, the rearrange. So I'm just wondering if the bulb can be inside of the cube so that the, the, the cube can be also detachable once integrated. Uh, have you ever considered something? Ah, oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, in this paper we only have 2.5D, which means the, right. those cubes are just stick on the floor, yeah, but right. yeah, I feel like, yeah, yeah, that's, a, yeah that's a good idea kind of to explore yeah, like these hatchable right. cubes in the future. Yeah. That, Thank you. Better. Yeah. Okay, let's thank the speaker.